أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوما الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم احمد هو نصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كلا انهم عن ربهم يومئذ لمحجوبون ثم انهم لصال الجحيم ثم يقال هذا الذي كنتم به تكذبون كلا ان كتاب الابرار لفي عليين وما ادراك ما عليون كتاب مرقوم يشهده المقربون صدق الله العظيم ان سوره المتففين کتاب الفجار ان کتاب الابرار دا ریکارڈ آف دی ایول ڈوئرس ڈسکریئنٹس ٹرانسگریسرس فار دیٹ وی ہیو ریڈ دیٹ اٹ ول بی ان دی سجین ناؤ دس سجین ورڈ از فرام سجن اینڈ سجن مینس پرزن جیل سو سارٹ آف اے جیل اور اے پرزن But what about what is the meaning of kitab? As far as I have understood, that the kitab here means the soul itself. Because whatsoever we earn in this life, it is imprinted on our souls. Now we can very easily understand, if a chip, you know, computer chip contains a lot, a, a whole world in it, So actually, and you know this tape, tape recorder, on the tape, everything is printed, not to be seen. So in our souls, everything is being printed, what we are doing, the imprints are on our souls. When these souls depart, when the angels have taken it away, now the souls of the righteous, pious people, virtuous people, they are taken to ala illiyeen. Illiyin, a very high place. Illiyun, a people very high. And the souls of these people, evildoers, miscreants, oppressors, they are taken to the sijin, to the prison. And on the souls, you know, all the deeds that have, they have earned, bad or good, they are imprinted. This is my interpretation of this word. But now we were reading, إِذَا تُطْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَاطِرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ When to those people who belie the coming of the Day of Judgment, our revelations are recited. They say they are the fables of the ancients, old stories. Kalla, no. بَلْ رَانَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ On their hearts, there is a rust. Their hearts have rusted. Actually what happens, as I quoted before also, I remember, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. When someone does something wrong, he's committed a sin, a black spot comes on the heart. Now if he repents and he, he now is doing good deeds, it is washed off. If not, If it is continuing sitting, these black dots go on adding up, adding up, adding up. Till such time that the whole heart becomes black and it becomes closed like this. The Prophet, you know, he closed his fist like this, it is closed. Now nothing good can enter it. No sermon, no vase, no admonition, no reminding can benefit this person because this heart has become all black. And it is closed. 
the same phenomenon is said here. Kalla bal rana ala kulu bihim ma kanu yaksebun. What they had been earning, the deeds, the bad deeds, they have caused a rust on their hearts. So due to this rust, you know, these realities of this universe, they are not reflected. Otherwise, if the heart is clear, well, these realities of the universe, which, you know, Iman discusses, this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the coming of the Day of Judgment, etc., etc., these things are reflected in the hearts of the people when the ayat are recited to them. Kalla innahum ar rabbihim yawmaizin la mahjubun. No. But these people will be, on the Day of Judgment, they will be wheeled from their Lord. They will not be able to see their Lord. What does it mean? The believers will be able to see their Lord on the Day of Judgment. When Allah comes, we shall be reading Surah Al-Fajr. Waja rabbuka wal malaku saffan saffa. Well, that ground, you know, where all the human, mankind will be assembled, then there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend, and all angels will come. And there, you know, the final decisions will be declared. But in that ground also, the believers will have the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they will be looking to Him. Ila rabbiha nasira, in Surah Al-Qiyamah also, Ila rabbiha nasira, they will be looking towards their Lord. And here the reverse. These people, evildoers, they will be wheeled off and they will not be able to see your, their Lord. Summa innahum lasalu jaheem. And then they have to enter the hellfire. Summa you call. And then it will be said to them, Hazal ladhi kuntum behi tukazdebun. This is that thing which you had been belying. No jannam, no nothing of the sort, no judgment, no resurrection. Kalla. Now, the reverse, converse. Inna kitab al abrare lafi illiyin. The record of the pious people will be in the illiyun. Illiyun, the very high, some place very near, because we know that in Surah Al Najm, that Jannatul Mawa is close to that Sidratul Muntaha, and maybe this illiyun is also a place very close to it. So the souls of those people, the, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who believed in Him, and they obeyed Him during His lifetime, their lifetimes, they will be kept very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi illiyun. Uma adraka ma illiyun kitabu marku. What do you realize? What is that illiyun? That's also a register inscribed. Yashhaduhun muqarrabun. And the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witness that, Yashhaduhul Mukarrabun. And the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witness that, you know, that Illiyun, the closest angels who are very near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are there close by. Yashhaduhul Mukarrabun. Inna labrara lafi na'im. Verily, the pious shall be in the bliss. Alal araik yanzurun. They will be on the couches and seeing, looking on. Tarif of Ivojuahim Nazratan Naim. You will be able to see in their faces the freshness and radiance of bliss. You score them in Rahitni Maktum, and they will be given to drink a pure wine, sealed. Khitabu Hubis, the seal will be from Musk. Wafi Zaleka Fadiyatana Fasil Mutanafisun. And for this thing, let the strivers strive and compete with one another. You are competing with each other in this world for more and more wealth, more and more progress in this world. There is a race going on. You are competing. But you should compete to get this reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Compete with each other. Go further and further in righteousness and in charities and good deeds and the service of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its propagation of its dawa and to struggle to establish the deen of Allah. وَبِزَاجُهُمْ in تَسْدِيمُ The wine that will, they will be given, its admission will be from the water of Tasneem. And what is Tasneem? عَيْنَ يَشْرَبَ بِهَا الْمُقَرَّبُونَ A fountain by which the closest of the Allah, the people, the mankind who will be the closest to Allah, they will drink. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ عَجْرَمُوا كَانُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ عَامَنُوا يَدْحَكُونَ 
Now coming to the worldly life. Verily those who were guilty, they used to laugh at those who believed. Abu Jahl and Walid bin Mughira and Uqbay bin Abdi Mu'ayyad, they, they used to laugh at Muslims. What has happened to them? They've gone crazy. Who are they? These, you know, slaves, etc. Laborers, they have gathered around Muhammad Sallallahu They used to laugh at them. And when they passed by them, they used to wink to each other. These are the people who have gone crazy. So they wink to each other. And when they returned to their families, they returned jesting, joking. And when they used to see these believers, they would say, these people have gone astray, they have gone crazy. They have, you know, lost sight of their profits and losses. Wama wursalu alayhim hafizin. Although they were not sent as guardians over them. Fal yawm al-lazina amanu min al-kuffari al-hakoon. So this day, today, on the day of his election, those who had believed, now they are laughing on the disbelievers. Ala la raik yanzurun. And they are sitting and declining on the couches and Looking on, Hal Subhaval Kuffar Makanu Ifadun have not the disbelievers been rewarded fully for what they used to do. They were laughing on the believers in that world. Here now they are being laughed at by those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the past life. Suratul in Shaqaq. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Is a samaun shakpat. When the heaven will be split asunder. Wazinat li rabbiha wa hukpat. And it will obey the call of its Lord. And surely it has been ordained to do so. It has to listen and obey. Wazinat li rabbiha wa And when the earth will be stretched out. Wazinat li rabbiha wa takhallat. And it will cast outside all that is in it and will become empty. And it will obey its Lord's call and surely it has been ordained to do so. Now this is again a picture of that day. Now is an ardu muddat, when this earth will be stretched. We know that this world is round. If it is stretched, what will happen? It will become Ecliptic, ecliptical first, and then maybe straight, absolutely plain. So whatever is in it will itself come out. So that is actually a logical result of this stretching of the world. This earth will be stretched. When the earth will be stretched, and it will cast outside whatever is in it. These are the dead. These are the people who are buried in it. And this is, you know, everything which it has, it will throw it out. يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانِ إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحًا فَمُلَاقِيهِ O man, surely you are ever laboring continuously and laboriously and you are sure to meet your Lord. This is a very important point. Man in this life has to undertake labor, hard work, struggle. To earn livelihood, whatever we have to do, everybody knows. To get the education, what you know, the youth coming from Pakistan, other countries, they are reading, but they are earning money, they are working, all these things. So this is lot of every human being, is to work and work and work and work. But then, suddenly one day, he will find himself standing before the Lord. Now bring forth your account. What did you do? If we compare ourselves to the animals, horses, they are drawing the, whatsoever they are drawing, tangas, etc. But they are not going to be resurrected. Their tragedy ends with the death. Or 
you know, the other beasts who carry load, they are working here, working hard, no doubt. But no resurrection, no questioning. But the tragedy of man is twofold. Here, you have to suffer sorrows after sorrows, griefs after griefs. Man has to have these, these shocks, hard work plus shock. But then, over and above that, inna ka kadyahu nila rabbe ka kadhan fa bulaqi. But the real tragedy would be when you will have to stand before your Lord. Fama manutiya kitabahu be yamini. So as for those who will be given his record in the right hand, fasafa yuhasab or hisabang yasira, soon will his account be taken by an easy reckoning. What is hisab yasir? There is a hadith. The Prophet said that the account will be presented, that's all. Go. No detailed questioning. Many people from this ummah, the Prophet said 70,000 of my ummah, who are the mutawakkilun, who have total faith in Allah, they will have this end. So for you have some voice, Abba Yasir. Just looking into it, and that's that's all. But so far you have some voice, Abba Yasir. But yon kalebo ilah lehi masroora, and he will return. After that peshi, you know, he was presented, but now he's coming back to his family, and he's happy, joyfully, that I have been saved. Vamma manutiya kitabahu varaz ahadi, and as for those who will be given the record behind his back. Why? The angels will try to give him in the left hand, but they will keep their left hand back. They don't want to hold that. So they will be given from their backs. Fasawfa yadru subura. So such a man will then call for death. Let death come to me. Would that death could come to me. Would be would that this be the end? Vayasla sa'ira, but he will have to enter a blazing fire. Innahu kana fi ahlihi masroora. Verily, in the past life, he was with his family, and he was enjoying the life joyfully. He had his joys and rejoices in that world. From haram and from all forbidden means he was earning and he was gathering all the comforts of life and the luxuries and everything. So he has had his, whatever was his share, he already had it in that world. Innahu kana fi ahlihi masroora. Innahu zanna allahi yahur. He thought that he would never have to return to his Lord. Bala, why not? Inna rabbahu kana bihi basira. Surely his Lord was ever beholding him, seeing him, what he is doing. And what for? To reward him. Fala uqsimu bishafaq. But nay, I swear by the afterglow of sunset. You know the glow after sunset, the reddish light on the horizon. This is shafaq. Wallayli wa ma wasaq. And by the night, and what it envelops into it. Wal qabak is a tasaq. And by the moon, when it grows full gradually. La tarkabun na tabakan an tabak. Surely. Mankind, you shall certainly rise from stage to stage. These four ayat, as I have come to understand them, you may not find this opinion anywhere, so I am telling this is my opinion. That this, these ayat, they denote the renaissance of Islam. Islam came with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The advent of Islam, the oaths we had in Surah Al-Muddassir. Kalla wal qamar, wal layl is adbar, wa subhi is asfar. 
in the hala ehdal kubar. Three oaths and in the hala ehdal kubar. And this is the oath. Kalla wal kamar. You know the teachings of the former messengers of Allah. They were like the light of the moon, which is very light. No intense light. But Layla is Adbar. There was a 600 years long night during which there was no Nabi, no revelation coming, no messenger of Allah. But now, Vasubhi is Asfar. Now the son of the messengerhood of Muhammad has arisen. And it has enlightened, lightened the whole, this world. In the Allah al Kubar. Surely, surely, this advent of Muhammad sallam is one of the biggest and mightiest things. Now the Prophet had said that after my death, four periods of time come before the end of this world. First, Khilafa ala min hajin nabuwa, the pious caliphate, caliphate of the pattern of nabuwa, the system which was established by Muhammad sallam was retained absolutely in the same form, with no difference whatsoever. But then he said, Summa yarfa Allah asha yarfa, when Allah will like, He will lift away this caliphate. Summa takunu mulkan aadvan. Then there will be a period of cruel kingship, to which Allama Iqbal has denoted by the words Arab imperialism. The Umayyad period, the Abbasid period, it was not caliphate, kinship. And there were cruelties inflicted upon people. What happened at Karbala? What happened at Harra? For three days and nights, the Madina of Muhammad, the city of Muhammad, was declared permissible for anything you do, for the army. Whatever you do. This happened at the hands of the so-called Muslims. Then hundreds of Tabi'een were massacred, slain, killed by Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, and so on and so forth. But then the Prophet said this period will also come to an end. Then there will be the third period, that will be kingship with slavery. Summa yakunu mulkan jabriyan. And which now I understand, I don't say it, I can't say what the companions understood when the Prophet divided this kingship into two periods. Kingship, which is cruel. Kingship with slavery. But now we can understand it was the period of the colonial rule. At least formerly, although they were cruel people, but they were Muslims. Babar was a Muslim, Akbar was a Muslim, so to say. Jahangir was a Muslim and so on and so forth. But then he became slaves to Queen Victoria. George VI, Edward VIII, and so on and so forth. So that was the third period. Then he said, Summa takunu khilafatan ala bin hajin nabuwa. Again there will be a period of khilafa ala bin hajin nabuwa. This period is now not very far off. Also the doomsday is not very far off. إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا They see it, it as if it's very far off, and we see it close by. It's in front of us. So this, the essence of Islam, true real Islam, not this Islam of ours, this is no Islam. We are individually Muslims. We believe in Allah. That's all. Where is Islam? There's a hadith the Prophet says, a time will come. La yabqa min al-Islam illa ismuhu. Wa la yabqa min al-Quran illa rasmuhu. Out of Islam nothing will remain except its name. Out of Quran nothing will remain except its script. The period is here. But true, true Islam, real Islam, practical Islam, will be revived. There will be a resurgence. There will be a revival. There will be a renaissance. And this time, this will 
cover the whole of the globe. I can't give you the detailed ahadith of the Prophet regarding this. But how this will happen, this is depicted here. Fala usum bishafak. Now actually what happened? What we have is, when the sun has gone down, there is some red light. Of Islam only we have this. Islam, son of Islam, has set. But only some light we find in the world of Islam. That is the afterglow of the sunset. And this very long night, you know, of the decadence of the Ummah, downfall of the Ummah, downtroddenness of the Ummah. But then, well, Kamar is at Tasak. Moon will rise and gradually, gradually, gradually it will be, become full. This process of revival of Islam and the nations of Islam is progressing stage by stage. There were some movements to begin with. They did some part. They contributed their bit. But then another movement came. The next generation, they are taking this standard a bit forward. The third generation, fourth generation. And during this 20th century, I can see at least in the Indian subcontinent, three generations have passed, which are passing the standard and the, what should we say, the, the uh, torch, torch of Islam from generation to the other generation. But every generation is taking it upwards. The Tarkabunna, Tabakan and Tabak. The national movements, freedom movements, actually, they at least got for us freedom. When there is freedom, now it's easy for us to establish Islam. So there are movements, although we have not succeeded, except for we may say Iran, but that is a Shia country. In any other country we have not succeeded. There is a success, but it has to be established. It's still, you know, very shaky, and all the kufr. Is, has gathered round it, and that is in Afghanistan. But Islam will be revived. And this is the prophecy of the Prophet. And gradually, this process is going step by step upwards. So what is to them? What's the matter with them? That they believe not. And when the Qur'an is recited unto them, they don't fall and prostrate. This is the ayah of Sajdah. Instead of believing in our recitation of our ayat, these people who are disbelieving, they belie. And Allah very well knows what they are gathering for themselves their deeds, or the misdeeds, should be said. Whatever they are gathering for the hereafter, Allah knows. For Bashir hum alim. So, O Prophet wasallam, give them the glad tidings of a painful chastisement. Illa lazina amanu amil salihat. Except those who come to believe and do righteous deeds. Lahum ajrul ghairu mamnoon. For them shall be a reward which will be unending, continuous, forever, forever. Now we have a pair, Vassamai Zatil Buruj and Vassamai Vattariq. Al Buruj, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Vassamai Zatil Buruj, Wal Yomil Ma'ud, Vashahidim wa Mashhud. قُتِلْ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ النَّارِ ذَاتِ الْوَقُودِ إِذْهُمْ عَلَيْهَا قُعُودِ وَهُمْ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ الشُّهُودِ صدق الله العظيم Now there's a historical event in the background. It happened nearly half a century before the birth of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. You know, Yemen was the governed by Himyars, Himyarites. And one of the kings of Himyars, Taban Asad Abu Karb, he became 
جیو تو جیو علماء فروم بنو قریضہ آف مدینہ دے وینٹ دیئر ٹو یمن پریچ دیئر فیت اینڈ ہی ایکسپٹڈ یوڈائزم ایز ہز ریلیجن تو ہول اسٹیٹ واز کنورٹیڈ انٹو جیو اسٹیٹ دس سن واز یو نواس ہی واز ویری کروئل ویری کروئل ویری کروئل In the north of Yemen, south of Bakka, there is Najran. In Najran, there were the Christians, followers of Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wassalam. And these were, up till that time, fully muwahideen. Trinity, they had not entered their creed. So to say, they were the true Muslims of that day. But this person, Zunivas, He attacked Najran to destroy the center of Christianity, followers of, Christ, of Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wassalam. And the incident took place in the October of the year 523 AD. Very big trench was dug and then in it the fuel was placed and then fire was ignited. And then those who believed in the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, no. And the Prophet of Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam, they were thrown in that fire. And they say, historical accounts, from 20 to 40 thousand people were burnt alive. So this is the incident, historical incident in the background. But Samai Zatul Buruj by the heaven with its constellations, by Yawmil Maud, and by the promised day, the promised day of judgment, the promised day of Asa and Al Qiyama, by Shaidi wa Mashud, and by the witness and that which is witnessed. One opinion is that Juma Friday, it comes. in every city, every township. But Hajj, for Hajj, for Arafah, you have to go there. So that is the witness, sir, and that is the witness. Wallahu alam. Qotil ashabu l-Ukhdood. That's to the companions of the ditch, people of the pits. Annar izat al-Waqood, of the fuel fire, fuel fed fire. Izum alaya qurood. When they were, they sat around it. When they were burning, you know, those people, the believing people who believed in Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam, they were looking and enjoying. Izum alayha qurud, wa hum ala ma yafaluna bil mu'minina shuhud. And they were witnessing to what they were doing to the believers. Wa ma naqabu min hum. And they did not avenge themselves from them. Illa an yu'minu. Except for that, the only crime of those people was, and you menu billahi al-aziz al-hamid, that they believed in Allah, the mighty and the praised. Al-lazhi lahu mulku samawati wal-lard. To whom belong the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. Wallahu ala kulli shayin shaheed. And verily Allah is a witness over everything. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Surely those who persecuted or persecute the believing men and the believing women. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا And then repent not. فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْجَهَنَّمْ For them shall be the chastisement of the hell. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقِ And for them shall be the chastisement of burnings. Now actually, this is You know, being recited to whom? Abu Jahl. He was persecuting, torturing. Sumayya, Razi Allahu Ta'ala Anha. Yasir, Razi Allahu Ta'ala Anha. The same thing which were the, these people, you know, the chiefs of Makkah, the Mushrikeen, they were doing the Muslims. So in the past also, these things, you know, happened. So actually, they are shown this mirror. What happened to them will happen to you also. In the Lazina Amanu Amir Salihat, surely those who believe and do righteous deeds, 
لہم جنات ان تجریب میں چاہتے ہیں انہار فر دیم ویل بی گارڈنز انڈر نیتھ وچ ریورز ویل بی فلوئنگ ذالک الفوض القبیر دیٹ از انڈیڈ دی گریٹ ٹرائمف اینڈ سکسس ان بخش رب کا لا شدید شورلی دی گریپ آف یور لارڈ از ویری سپیئر سپیئر وین ہی سیز از ویل اٹس اے سیزنگ آف ڈوم ان ہو ہوا یوگ دے ہوا یو ویری لی اٹ از ہی ہو اوریجنیٹس دی کریشن اینڈ دین ریپیٹس وہ ہوا الغفور الودود اینڈ ہی از دی فرگیونگ اینڈ لونگ ون ذو لاش ہی از دی لارڈ آف دی تھرون المجید دی گلوریس ون فال لما یو رید ڈور آف وٹ ایور ہی انٹینس لما یو رید وٹ ایور ہی انٹینس ہی دوس He does, because nobody can stop him. There is no force which can stop him. Khalataka hadith ul janood. Has there come to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the story of the armies, big armies? Fir'aun wa Samud. The armies of Fir'aun and the hosts of Samud. Bale lazina kafaru fi taqseeb. Nay. But those who disbelieve keep engaged in belying, belying, belying. Wallahu bi warahim muhid. Although Allah is encompassing them from all around, they can't run away. They're already encompassed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bal huwa Quran al-Majid. Nay, this is a glorious Quran. Filahi mahfuz. The real Quran is in the protected and guarded tablets. So this is the last time that this mention has come. Thrice in Quran it is mentioned. The real Quran is there. Innahu fi ummil kitab ladayna la aliyun. It is with us that ummul kitab. The real Quran is there in that book. And we read in Surah Al-Waqiyah, إِنَّهُ لَقُرَانٌ كَرِيمٌ فِي كِتَابٍ مَقْنُونٌ لَا يَمَسُّهُ إِلَّا الْمُطَحَّرُونَ The hidden book. It cannot be touched except by those who have been extremely purified. Angels. And we have read today, قَلَّا إِنَّهَا تَسْكِرَا فَمَنْ شَعَا سَكَرَا فِي صُحُفٍ مُكَرَّمَةٍ مَرْفُوعَةٍ مُطَحَّرَةٍ بِعَيْدِ سَفَرَةٍ كِرَامٍ وَرَرَا And here for the last time, بَلْ هُوَ قُرْآنُ الْمَجِيدِ فِي لَوْحِ مَحْفُوسِ This, what we have, is an attested copy of that Qur'an. The real Qur'an is there. Surah Al-Tariq بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِق By the heaven and the stars which visits at night. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِق And what will we make you realize? What is that star which visits at night? And Najmu Saqib. It is a star of piercing brightness. <coughs> the Arabs used to worship it. In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz. This is the muqsam alay. These oaths on this. In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz. There is not a single soul but has a watcher over it. Verily, on every soul there is a watcher and guardian. فَلْيَنْدُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقْ So, man should think and see from what he has been created. خُلِقَ مِمْ مَائِنْ دَافِقِمْ He was created from a gushing fluid. يَخْرُجُ مِمْ بَيْنِ السُلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ Which issues from between the loins and the ribs. That is actually the place where the testicles used to be. But then they descended down into the scrotal sac. So the spermatic fluid traverses the whole, you know, that distance back. So this is Bana Sulbiva Taraib. In the Huala Rajay Lakadir, when he created man out of the drop of sperm, the gushing. Liquid coming out. 
can he not recreate him? Verily, he is able to bring him back to life in resurrection. Yawma tubla sarayr. The day when the secrets will be examined. فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَاصِرٍ So there will be no strength and no helper for anyone. وَالسَّبَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعَ By the heaven which sends rain after rain, recurring. وَالْأَرْضِ ذَاتِ الصَّدْعَ And by the earth which splits. When you know a growth comes out of it, any tree, anything, plant, it splits. وَالْأَرْضِ ذَاتِ الصَّدْعَ إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ الْفَصْلِ Surely this Qur'an is a decisive speech. It's going to decide the fates of the people. وَمَا هُوَ بِالْحَذُلِ And it is not an amusing joke. Don't take it easily. Don't take it lightly. And this Qur'an has come down. As we read in Surah Al-Bani Israel, وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ we have sent down it with truth, total truth. And it has come down with total truth. So now, the fate, fates of the nations will be decided by this Quran. As there is a very clear hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah, from Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله تعالى. عن Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله تعالى قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يرفع بهذا الكتاب أقواما ويضع به آخرين. Now Allah will raise nations due to this book and will bring them down when they turn their backs to it. This is what happened to the Muslim Ummah. وہ زمانے میں معزز تھے مسلمان ہو کر اور تم خار ہوئے تاریخ قرآن ہو کر. اقبال has given this diagnosis. خار از محجور یہ قرآن شدی شکوہ سنجے گردش دوران شدی اے تو شبنم بر زمین افتندہی در بغل داری کتاب زندہی انہو لقول الفصل وما ہوا بالحاصل But as for the present انہم یقیدون قیدہ او محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم These disbelievers your enemies and our enemies they are planning their plans they are plotting against you and Islam and Quran. And I am also having a plan. I have a plot of my own. So my plan will succeed. For Mahilil Kafirin. But grant a delay and respite to these disbelievers. Don't make haste. Don't wish that. It should be decided for them very soon. No. Mahilhum. Ta mahilil kafirin. Give them some delay and respite. Amhilhum. Please respite them. Provide gently for a while. The appeal, you know. Leave them alone for some time. Give them the time. Now this pair of Surah Al-Ala and Surah Al-Ghashiya. This pair... This thing should be noted about this prayer that the Prophet ﷺ used to recite in the Jummah prayer in the first rakah, this Surah Al-Ala, and the second Surah Al-Ghashiyah. Sometimes he used to recite these surahs in the Fajr prayer on the day of Friday, but mostly in the Friday prayers, in the first rakat, this Surah Al-Ala, and in the second Surah al And you know the reason which will come before us, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sabbih isma rabbika al-Ala. Glorify the name of your Lord who is most high, the highest. Al-Lazi khalaqa fasawwa. Who created everything and then gave it the finishing touches and fashioned it well. Khalaqa, a structure, and then the finishing of that structure, that is Tasviyah. In Takhliq, the main structure is 
completed. But now, the finishing touches. You know, when you are going to build a house, when the structure is there, you say, perhaps the work has been completed, but then you come to know that the real work starts after that. So this is Tasviya. Walladhi qaddara fahada And who has determined and limitations of everything and guided it. Every creature that Allah has created, there are limitations and potentialities given to it. It can do, do this, 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 this. It cannot do this. For example, we human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many things, but we can't fly. We invented aeroplane, etc., etc., but we can't fly. And a mosquito is flying. So this is, you know, the, the taqdeer of the species. Every species, an estimation has been fixed for it. These are the boundaries within which it has to live and work. So this is called qaddara. And for then every, every this animal has been given a guidance. Now these guidance are, there are levels. First of all, instincts. They are also guidance. When a child is born, he knows that his food is in the chest of the mother. He at once takes that, you know, the memory gland into his mouth and sucks. Who told him? Who trained him? So this is the first guidance. The instincts, they are a guidance. Then we shall read, inshallah, in Surah Al-Shams, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given human souls a guidance which is inherent in it, that it knows what is good, what is bad. So there are many levels of guidance. This is the final guidance. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this book, or he has been sending the books before, this is, you know, the final guidance. But the guidance has different steps. Who brought forth the, the green pasture where, you know, cattle, they eat. But then, after some days, it turned into a black, blackening stubble. Sanukreo ka falat ansa. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We shall make you recite our Qur'an so that you shall not forget. You don't take pains in, re in remembering it. We had this thing in Surah Al-Qiyamah. لَا تُحَرِّكْ بِهِ لِسَانَكَ لِتَعْجَلَ بِهِ إِنَّا عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَ فَإِذَا قَرَانَهُ فَتَّبِ قُرْآنَ You don't take pains. You don't move your tongue quickly to memorize it, lest you should forget it. It's upon us. We take the responsibility. We shall collect this in your mind, in your heart. And that the same thing is said here. Sadhukriyoka. We shall recite to you, and then you will not forget. Palatansa. Allah mashallah. Accept that which Allah wills. Inna yalamu jahra wa ma yakfa. Surely He knows the manifest and what is hidden. Everything is known to Him. Everything is before Him. And soon we shall make it easy for you to follow this smooth path. You will be made easy for the easiness. The, the real easiness, the real ease is Jannah. Where you will go and no fatigue now and nothing of the sort, no labor. Sasanu yasseroka. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you in a way that you will reach there very easily. وَنُيَسْتِرُوكَ لِلْيُسْرَى فَزَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَاتِ الزِّكْرَى So go on reminding the people, go on admonishing them, in case reminding profits them. Now because in Juma the khutbah is there, and Juma becomes Juma actually due to khutbah. Otherwise, we pray four rakat in Zuhr, and in Juma we pray two. So actually the most important thing of Juma prayer is the khutbah, integral part of the prayer. And it is for admonition. 
इट इज फॉर तस्कीर इट इज फॉर तालीम सो इन दैट प्रेयर द प्रॉफिट यूज टू डिसाइड दिस सूरा फजक्कीर इन नफात इज जिक्रा टू गो आउट रिमाइंडिंग इन केस दिस रिमाइंडिंग बेनिफिट दी पीपल सैयद करो मई अक्षा वेरी सून दोज हु फियर अल्लाह विल बी एडमोनिस्ट विल गेट द रिमाइंडिंग नो डोंट डिस्पेयर डोंट बी डिसअपॉइंटेड यू कंटिन्यू एंड पीपल विल लिसन मे बी समबडी लिसन्स टूडे मे बी समबडी लिसन्स नेक्स्ट फ्राइडे यू कंटिन्यू द प्रोसेस कीप इट गोइंग फजक के नफात इज जिक्र सैयद करो बन यक्षा पर्यता जन्न बो है अशका बट द मोस्ट वेचेड द मोस्ट विकेड विल अवॉइड इट ही विल नॉट बी एडमोनिस्ड बाई दिस कुरान ही विल नॉट टेक द रिमाइंडिंग ऑफ दिस कुरान अल्लाजी असलन नारल कुमरा हु विल देन बी कास्ट इन टू द ग्रेट फायर कुमरा और नारुल कुमरा द ग्रेटेस्ट फायर वाई द ग्रेटेस्ट प्रीचर ऑफ इस्लाम एंड द राइट पाथ इज मोहम्मद सल्लाम and even after his preaching even after his conveying the message of allah subhanahu wa taala if somebody is not accepting it means he is the most wretched and wicked person so the biggest you know reward and punishment should be for him summa la yamutu fiha wa la yahya then in that fire in that hell he will neither die nor live he will call that let death come to me let there be an end to my existence but no you will keep living so that you have this you keep on tasting this chastisement but this is no life neither alive nor dead so mala yamutu fiha wala yahya then he will neither die in it nor live qad aflaha man tazakka Verily, successful is the is the one who purifies himself, as we read in Surah Al-Hashr. We have the ruh, and then this material existence of ours. I quoted, you know, a quotation from the Upanishads. Man is in ignorance, identifies himself with the material sheets which encompass his real self. Now, if you can't purify your inner self, it is as if you have buried it in this sand. This is sand around this roof. This body of ours it comes from clay, earth. So that roof has been as if buried in this clay. But whosoever purifies, develops it, his own ana, his own khudi, he develops it, strengthens it. And then you know he bows before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Well, قد أفلح من تزكى وزكى رسم ربه فصلى. First you have to to be fully controlling your body, your animal being, your id or libido, your animal instincts. You should be in full control of it, and then you bow before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. as a full you know, as a one piece not that part of you is bowing before allah subhanahu wa taala and part of you is standing no 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 i am not going to submit that is the case if you are accepting some of the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala and rejecting the others you should bow before your lord in one piece in totality ya ayyu allazina amanu dkhulu fi silmi kaffa enter islam in totality not keeping any part of your life any aspect of your life you know away from it exempt from it but aflah man tazakka wa zakara asma rabbih fa salla verily successful will be the only one who has purified who has purified himself and then he remembers the name of his lord and then prays wa zakara asma rabbih fa salla and this is actually the picture of salatul juma in the khutbah there is the reminding there is the zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala 
the admonishing. And then you pray to rakat. So this is the picture of Jumar. In this way, actually, I am telling you that there is a reason why the Prophet ﷺ used to recite this surah in the prayer of Jumar. Bal to al hayat al dunya. This is essentially the basic disease with which we are suffering. But you are preferring the life of this day, this world. This world which is very near at hand. Akhra seems to be far away. Ab to aram se guzarti hai, akhrat ki khabar khuda jane. So you are thinking about this world. Here again I want to point out that disbelieving in Akhra, that is going very far off. Dalla dalalam ba'ida. Who says there is no Akhra, there is no resurrection, there is no Basabad al Maut, nothing of this sort. Well, he has gone very far away astray. Fakad dalla dalalam ba'ida. But one says, I believe. But he is preferring this life. That is out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. All our endeavors, striving, running hither and there, day and night, thinking about, planning about this world, this worldly life, its needs. Bal tu sirun hayat al dunya, bal akhirat o khairu abka. While Akhra, hereafter, is much better and also a lasting one. This is temporary abode, everybody knows. At least this thing is known to every person. Is there any person who can say, I will not die? What does it mean? I have to go from here. This is not my permanent abode. I have to go from there. But we want to keep this even idea of death away from our mind, conscious mind. As if we are saying to ourselves, the death is for others only, not for me. I have to live here. As you know, Quran says there are two places. This was the condition of the Jews. That each one of them wants to live for thousand years. The love of this life. And because this time, I let me quote the hadith of the Prophet You should go yati al nas I fear a time will come when the when the nations of the world will call each other upon you, O Muslims. Just as when a feast is ready, so then people are called. Okay, come and have have the meals. In this way, the nations of the world would call each other on you. The Sahaba, you know, they were very much surprised. I mean, Kalatin Nahlu Yamaji Ya Rasulullah. O Messenger of Allah, shall we be on that day very little in number? He said, No, 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 Balantum Yamaji in Kasir. Your number will be very great. Billion and a half. But you will like, you know, Wosaw Sail. When a flood comes, there is some, you know, froth over. You will be like that froth and nothing else. Why? Because there will be a disease in you, which is called vahan. Lakinna fikum vahan. Then the company is asked, what is this vahan? We have never heard of this disease. Vahan. The Prophet said, Hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut. The love of this world and the fear of death. Running away from death. When this will overcome you, then you will be like a very you know, so tasty fodder for all the nations of the world. In the Hada Lafis Hafilula, verily. This very teaching was in the ancient scriptures also. All the ancient scriptures, whether they were of Nu or of Ibrahim, this point was central. That this world is temporary, the real life is the life of the hereafter. 
Sof Ibrahim and Musa in the scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa. Alayhim as-salatu wa salam. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Quran al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakim. Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.